He said, do you remember her name? No. So are you sure? Yeah. Remember what she looks like? Yeah, kind of. She wants to say goodbye to you before you leave. Why? I just have to say why. I don't know, it's her request. I didn't know her except the few exchanges we had, you know, in the rice fields. That's it. Said so the girl wanted to say goodbye. And that uh, Vietnam wanted to give me a farewell party. My last night in Vietnam. We didn't go back to Camp 5. We went to another camp that was attached to 776. As we were approaching, they, it was like a telephone pole. What it looked like, but it was square. And they had this individual tied up to it. It looks like it was handcuffed or something to, tied to the, the pole. I couldn't make out it was at the distance. We got closer. And I could see it was a girl. And it wasn't until I got out of the vehicle uh, that I seen who it was. Then uh, a truck came up, a, uh, a small military truck. Seven guys got out of it, NVA, NVA uniform. And they all carried AK 47s. So Tenet, he barked out orders. They lined up about you know, 20, 25 feet from the girl, something like that. He told me, he said, uh, it's a shame you couldn't have got here earlier. You could have said goodbye to your friends also. I don't know what he's talking about. The three, the, the two guards and the officer, that were involved in a black market. They had executed them there earlier that day. All three of them. Same time he read a uh, declaration to the girl, told her her name and everything, where she was from. The declaration of the uh, high tribunal, uh, the penalty for high treason, and uh, the penalty is that she had to forfeit her life. Now what's going to happen to this young lady is uh, because of you. So, what do you think about that? He says, you know she's only 19. That's what she told me. You've lived in Vietnam long enough, you understand the loss of Vietnamese loss of a child. Yeah, I understand. And so how do you feel that the family of this girl is blaming you for what is gonna to happen to her? So I have no control of it. told me, he says, you're very cold-hearted. That's, you see, it's typical American. Typical American imperialist. And he walked back over about 15 feet. Those guys are about 15 feet, maybe 20 feet from where I was. And he told them to lock and load. And she kept begging. She kept begging for her life. Said she didn't know any. She didn't know me. She didn't know anything about me. She didn't help me with anything. She was not part of any plot against Vietnam. She loved Vietnam as her country. She was a Vietnam patriot. She kept saying things like that and crying at the same time and begging for her life. They didn't even aim really. They just held the the weapons at just a little above waist length. And 
He gave the order to fire and they did. They kept firing and kept firing. I think those magazines had, all of them had to be full mags. Because they practically chewed that post in half. I don't even want to describe what it did to the girl. Can you just close her name again? Lam Ti Hoa Mai. They killed their people wholesale. I witnessed a lot of execution of them. One of them was a friend of mine, a close friend, Captain Nia. He's really a true patriot. Our people in South Vietnam don't like to have a communist.